Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Danilo Acquisto. So this ride over here is for you, all right? For two reasons. One, because it's the weekend and we're very excited, but two, to say thank you. The show has been trending the past two weeks in a row. Today is another exciting edition of Winner Home, SA's premier interior design reality competition brought to you by Private Property right here on Afternoon Express. It's the show where we follow three design duos as they decorate three cluster homes at Eye of Africa Estate in Joburg, one room at a time. And while they compete for awards, the real winner here could be you, because at the end of the competition, Competition, one lucky viewer will win their choice of one of three transformed homes. First, let's take a look back at what happened last week and where we are in the competition. Last time on Winner Home, the design duos got the brief for their next space. It's time to design and decorate the spare room. However, there is one rule. It may not be a bedroom. With complete creative freedom, the duos had very different ideas. From a walk-in closet to a study and a library, Team Habitat chose to upcycle some vintage furniture and hunted for inspiration in the urban jungle. <laughs> Team VC called on a friend for a creative collaboration in photography, but the bubble quickly burst when they discovered Team House and Leisure working with the very same photographer. And what is this? I'm also doing a collab with Mpo. Are you guys away? <laughs> we didn't realize you were collaborating with him as well. It's exciting to work with both of you guys. Anyway. With a shared collaboration adding spice to the challenge, who will bring their A-game to the spare room design? Time management has been the toughest lesson our design duos have had to learn thus far. With all three design duos showing confidence in their schedule this time round, things should be shaping up for a comfortable and relaxed finish. Or are they? It's our final day and we have a few hours to go. Asia Stone is not yet here. The blinds are not yet here and we're still waiting for the lady to call us to come and get the blinds, so... Um, panicking on the inside. We're rushing around, trying to pull everything together, sure. but it's going crazy. The cupboards need to come. I mean, we've only just got paint. The chandelier's still being built. I mean, literally, they're building the chandelier, and it's like, guys, we don't have time, because the flooring guys need to come in, then the cupboard guys need to come in. Mm -hmm. I think half the chandelier ended up on the beer's head. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> It's the final day and we have quite a bit to do. Yep. It makes me more to be like, ah, we need to kill this. Like it's, do uh, you get my point? Like if something is not done and I know that it's going to be done, it makes me push them more. And I'm actually glad that we are where we are right now. So what do we still have left to do? Uh, we have the paintings to hang, the blinds to put. We have to clean this room and style it. So okay. I think it's gonna work. So I think we have about an hour left and Danilo will be on his way. <laughs> so we need to work magic in this room, Oti. Yep, I think so too. Hold this for me. Yeah, boy. Well, at least we have this going for us. Uh -huh. So, let's see how it's gonna work. Ooh, it's it. dirty, hey? Uh, I love it, what do you think? I love it too. Perfect. Just need to clean it, that's it. Just need to clean it. Yeah. Right. So let's hang the pictures and then we'll take it from there. Cool beans. Yep. Are those not too heavy for you, sir? Uh, I'm not even worried about if they're heavy. I'm just glad they're here on time. I know, right? After so long. If they don't fit, you might as well just book me into first copy. <laughs> Please go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also glad these are ready now. So we're tying a knot, right? Yeah, we need to make that knot so that they don't hang too low. I'm so happy everything is coming together, but I'm just worried about the table. If it's gonna be here on time. I think it will be. You should just trust, yeah. Ah, the power pumped in thinking. Yes, <laughs> it works. We used the double velvet snow green for our walls, and 
We're actually worried that it wouldn't pick up as a green, but when you walk into the space, it looks green. very nice and hot. And what I love about the green that we selected for the wall is that it's very light and like it, like its name, wispy, the whispers. Yes. <laughs> like a very whispery green. <laughs> Over at Team Habitat's house, it's all hands on deck to get the room done. So we have spent all our cash on, on that a, chandelier. On an oversized chandelier. Uh, it's to die for, I'm not sorry, for even a second. Now it's time, when the cash has run out, when the cash is dry, it's time to DIY. Do it yourself. Mm. I don't think anything ever comes together as planned. Until it is put into the planned position <laughs> that you had planned it to be in. But it's coming together. Once the chandelier for me went up, I knew the room was... It had life. Absolutely. Yeah, and then it was just placing ornaments, yes. moving around construction workers because they're still busy. We trying to clean. Trying not to over clutter a space that's already very busy with a lot of lavishness. We've just hung our pictures and we're really excited. Uh, they look beautiful against mm -hmm. our beautiful paint technique. Everything just works. I think the pictures complement the paint technique more, honestly speaking. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And it shows the grime. Yeah. Like, like it shows that busyness of Jobek behind with, with the paint technique yeah. and the silent of the, of, the, of the city when you are alone. So we went with our mentor to select the palm tree and we decided to go with a bigger one because of, we didn't find a smaller one. So we put it into the room now, and it's actually big. And we, there's nothing we can do with our with, with with it being that big. But I think said, it works. Yeah, it works. It actually complemented the room, but it was huge over the top. Just like bam, like a beer and bread. Our sister Stone is here. They're busy installing it, and it's looking beautiful. I'm loving the outcome. We have a vanilla no scissor stone table, and. As part of our unit, we try to incorporate scissor stone as a feature that's, you know, to showcase like the versatility of the product, yes. that it's more than just a countertop or a vanity top. You can do more than that with it. And it basically extended the floating shelf. So it looks like a floating shelf, but a practical one where and you can actually work from. A web top at the same time. Um, our carpenter was trying to install the blinds oh. and he Drilled a hole to hook the blinds yeah. onto, and a little bit of our plaster just. And I was like, oh no. But then, yeah, it can be fixed. It's not like a train smash. Yes. He just needs to go in a little bit more. There are a lot of people in our room, and we worried about our carpet. Yeah. It's gonna get dirty. Because it's not even a solid plastic that's plastic. on the floor. Plastic. Yeah. Every time somebody moves this way, it moves with them. So. And you'll find someone resting <laughs> comfortably on, on, the, on top of the carpet. Just like, why? <laughs> It's always a chase to make it to the finish line in time and get that award, that crown, meeting that time. So we are running around like headless chickens. We are trying to put it in box into the bookshelves. The last day is always crazy. So is that budget. I mean, it's gone. <laughs> time is money, they say, and it looks like some of our design duos don't have enough of either. After the break, it's lastminute.com for our design duos as they try to rush to finish their rooms. Grundig, for a good reason. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon, designed for life. Welcome back to Winner Home on Afternoon Express. I'm loving reading all your comments on social media using that hashtag, win a home. Now, before the break, our design duos had plenty of work to get done in order to complete their innovative spare rooms on time. They have a strict deadline to meet and minutes evaporate quickly in the final rush to the finish. Team Alson Leisure. Very confident at the halfway mark, and I'm seeing installation still gone. You guys have got 30 minutes left. Get this done, please. Is it going to be finished? Yes. It should be finished. <laughs> How are the nerves? Well, I'm fine now. Okay, good. <laughs> Whatever happens, guys, just please get this thing finished. You've got 30 minutes. Go, go, go. 
Thanks, Danilo. <laughs> Danilo just walked in and he's actually impressed with how things are looking so far. And I think we're almost done. Like, we just need an hour more, ideally. But it's still a mess because we still need to get out the plastics and yes, vacuum, and vacuum the carpet and, and start styling, basically. Yes, but I think we're going to get, get it right on time. Yes. Team VC, you guys have got 30 minutes to get completed. What is that? Uh, we were installing the blinds. We drilled a little hole into the wall and it literally just... Became a big hole in the wall. Yes. Oh, heavens. All right, you're going to get that sorted though. 30 oh, minutes. Yeah, our contractor is going to come in and help us. Like uh, hopefully. Then all right, get all this furniture installed. I see there's a little bit of paint on the wall. They get that all sorted. You guys have got 30 minutes to complete. Go, 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 Team VC. Going, going. Uh, it's like 30 minutes. I'm like, ah, oh, Danilo, don't come here with your time, time <laughs> moment here. We're stressing, we're yeah. stressing, um, but we're gonna get everything done. We have to. Mm -hmm. Over at Team Habitat's house, it's all hands on deck to get the room done. Wow. Hi. Okay, a lot more has been done since the halfway yeah, mark. Absolutely. This is a courtesy call, 30 minutes before all of this must be complete. Everything installed, everything cleaned. The judges are going to be on their way. 30 minutes. Oh my. Think you'll get it done? Well, if we could do what we've done since the last time you saw us, imagine what we can do with 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Honey, more Mirror things are coming in. Mirror this mirror minutes. will be up. <laughs> you guys put mirror back in Miracle. That, Good luck. Hallelujah! Thank you, Danilo. <laughs> in the final 30 minutes, all three duos work at a sprint pace to bring in the last few pieces of decor, clean up and style their rooms. It gives me great pleasure once again to do the countdown for the second challenge. Contestants, three, two, one, tools down. <sighs> Time is up. We've got to get out of the house. Yeah. And I'm happy because of we finished this time. <laughs> so then we just shouted tools down. Our space is done and we're happy with how everything is looking. We're done. The carpet is clean. Everything is looking as we had imagined Imagine. it would. Leave it into the hands of the judges. Leave it in the hand of the judges. Yeah. It was either that or getting into a panic and trying to work in that office and type up a storm. <laughs> yeah, and you end up ruining it instead of making it better. Ah, uh, as exciting as it is to see these spaces come to life, what's more exciting is imagining one of these homes as your very own. The winner home grand prize is your choice of one of three homes at the Eye of Africa estate as decorated by our design duos, complete with colorful paint finishes by Plascon and luxury court services by Caesarstone, as well as premier home appliances by Grundig. The total prize value is worth more than three million rand. And the best is, if you win, you get to choose which of the three completed houses you will call home. To enter, it's very simple. Go to privateproperty.co.za, click on that Winner Home logo, and then enter our bi-weekly competition for Plascon Paint to the value of 5,000 Rand. Answer a very simple question, and then vote for your favorite design duo. It's literally as easy as that. One entry, and you automatically stand in line to not only win the Plascon Paint, but also the furnished home worth more than 3 million Rand. Right, it's time now to have a look at the completed spare rooms, and the first space to be revealed is that of Team House and Leisure. For their spare room, Team House and Leisure wanted to create a multi-purpose space that would serve as both a chic home office as well as a walk-in closet. Sure, now this is a touch of luxury. Well done, you two. It's looking really good. House and Leisure, or should I say Team Walk-in Closet slash Study? Team HL. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the vision of this room. So what we did with the space was, since we removed our units in the main bedroom, was to turn this room into like a walk-in closet slash office space. The reason for adding a little informal office space was to make it more multifunctional and not just like a walk-in dress-up. And to make it more worth sitting in the space, we decided to add a lot of mirror doors to hide off all the clothing and like the mirrors, they sort of like reflect the space and it makes the space appear bigger as we did with our first room. And Banela, what are your favorite elements in the space that you've created here? I think first of all is the aura. Like what we tried to keep from the previous room is the warmth. So we're very selective of the colors. 
like we used a very light green which is almost pastel that actually brings in and complements the sunlight that comes into the space and also we used carpet from Valdetex and it's very exciting because it keeps the warmth in the space. And then we did awesome collaborations starting with Mpo Mohadi with the photograph that he took in Barcelona. We'd actually seen it on Instagram and we just were like this has to be in our space. And then we also collaborated with Scissor Stone by adding a floating table and with the floating table it's actually it keeps the consistency of the floating shelves. As our winning team from the last challenge, the judges had one critique, your curtains. How have you incorporated their advice into the space? We actually had to search for a better solution to our curtaining, only because it really was our downfall the last time. So we incorporated Venetian blinds, a shade darker to our walls, and I think that adds to the space, that it's actually well considered other than just placed there. A space as beautiful as this requires a lot of hard work. I mean, it was quite a quite a process getting the Caesar stone in. It was, it was, but then the, like the guys were quite good with it, so they managed to put it in quite nicely without scratching the cupboards. Brilliantly curated space is what the judges said of your last challenge. What do you think will be some of the criticisms for this challenge? That is too perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably that is too perfect. And another thing, it is that little knot we made up there, which was intentional, that's how it's supposed to be. They might think that it, it was a last minute thought. Yes. Or maybe we didn't order enough. Enough, yeah. Aside from the design, you guys also have to consider who's going to live in this space. Who did you have in your mind as your muse for this room? So actually we imagined a couple and it worked out with the both of us because we actually opposites and we meet each other halfway everywhere. I mean, if it was with me, I'd have so many flowers in here, but I have to accommodate him and say, okay, stop it, turn it down. Well, the judges are on their way. I hope you guys are ready. Good luck. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Daniel. You know, we can't wait for the feedback. What a beautiful space indeed. And you can also share your thoughts on the completed rooms by following Win a Home on social media and using the hashtag Win a Home. After the break, we step into the beautiful designs of Team VC and Team Habitat. Stay right where you are. <laughs> of Winnie Home, Caesar Stone, it's different. This is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Now our design duos could let their imaginations run wild as they decorated this spare room. The only rule that they got was that it cannot be a bedroom. As we reveal the completed spaces, it's time to step into the world of Team Habitat. Team Habitat maintain their opulent and bold feel for their home by creating what they call a leopard's library. A glamorous space for relaxation with whimsical touches of leopard print. Do you think someone would love to live in our room? Is that even a question? Exactly. I mean, it's to die for. I mean, if you don't even read books, honey, you can turn it into a study. If you want to sit by the bay window and lounge. If you just want to admire the beauty, I you mean, can. It's a room that pulls you in and you don't want to go out of. That's right. Hello, Team Habitat. I guess it's welcome to the jungle once again. Welcome to the Leopard's Library. Yes. I mean, you can see, first of all, we've got a light that says, hello, hello, hello. So it's the centerpiece. Yeah, we wanted to create a luxurious, glamorous, library slash study. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you, by chance, decide to slip your bed underneath there, it still works. Yes. So basically, we just wanted to create something versatile, something that a homeowner would just die to have. So the space is nice and versatile. I see you've got a library, it's a chill zone for the owners of the home. But what about that feedback from the last challenge? Did you take some of that judge's advice on? We still went bold. 
Yes, I don't absolutely. Think we we don't lose that. I mean, you can see we're yeah. standing under a rainfall yeah. of crystals. Generally, you can even take a seat on the bay window and just, you know, take out a book and lift up the shutters, you know, but it works. With that bay window floating like that, I mean, would it be able to even hold weight? Is that really practical? That's the thing, it's floating to so that you still have leg room when you walk past to go pick your book. Because you wouldn't want to walk in, ow! Catch your stiletto. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? On the edge. And even if you want to go up to the top, you just climb the ladder <laughs> and you. And we've made sure it's sturdy and you can move it around to whichever section. So it really just works, I feel, for the whoever owns this space, I'll be jealous of them. Not only are the judges looking at great design, as you know, they're looking at practicality too, and I'm seeing the chandelier being quite an interesting asset to have. Well, it's like, I don't know what, walking under a waterfall. It's not advised, unless yeah. you've got a swimming cap. So that's why we've put a center table, which you have to walk around wow. it, and when you walk around it, you kind of miss the chandelier. Okay, so you've thought about all the different elements. Absolutely. What didn't go according to plan? Budget got a bit tight, so we started upcycling a lot of furniture, like our mirror, which is also from the hospice. Also, a lot of our ornaments were purchased from the hospice, and mm. we also upcycled, sprayed them, and for me, I believe even if you are a homeowner, you know, you don't always have to have a lot of money to have beautiful little things. You know, and live the yeah, luxurious, and live the luxurious lifestyle. lifestyle. Apparently, the chandelier is quite a controversial piece in the sense that one of you wanted it, the other was like budget, budget, budget. You know, when I walk into a showroom, I pick the biggest, boldest piece and I go, <laughs> yes! Uh, it was a bit nerve wracking spending that type of amount. Absolutely. But we managed to pull it together even with our furniture. We managed to get high end pieces. Mm, and that velvet on gold. We managed to save money with our upcycling and being creative with creating the bookshelf. Absolutely. Yes. Using young carpenters who actually built this custom and they made it quite a floating. It's like, as you can see, it's floating. So that you don't, you can see the plastic on colors. It's like, it's fun in the sun and love triangle. Because we didn't want to take away from actually the walls, you know, that are beautifully painted. Okay, the judges are shortly going to be coming to visit your spaces. I mean, what are you hoping that they'll see and what do you think their negative comments are going to be? This time around, I honestly say, if they have something negative to say, they must backtrack and shut the front door. Because it's a winner. I honestly believe we've reeled ourselves in to a point where we try to still be bold and daring and something special. Create a beautiful space, I think, that is glamorous and luxurious. And the room feels bigger than when I walked in. I thought, oh my word. Now I feel like, oh yeah. Well, you two, well done. The judges are on their way to come and have a look themselves. I think it's looking amazing. A beautiful jungle in the middle of your home. Hey, a jungle with a rainforest of crystals. Mm. For their spare room, Team VC once again took reference from their fictional client and created a multifunctional space that could be described as an urban oasis. The room is more of a prayer room slash study and you can be yourself for a moment. Just pause around of everything that's going on around you yeah. and just be yourself, like be in a different space but in the same house. Wow, 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 wow. All right, Team VC, let's talk about your vision for your spare room. So in this space, we wanted to really just create a space for our client to come yeah. and power up or wind down. <laughs> I don't know what like to call it. It's like a meditating room, like an, an, an alone type of a, of a room, where it can also be turned into an office space. Like, a, it makes you think, honestly speaking, when you think here. It makes you calm. What about some of those highlights that are your personal favorites? Well, our favorite pieces are definitely this chair that we mm -hmm. found. We love the feeling of it. It's actually very comfortable as mm -hmm. well, if you'd like to try it. Another piece that we love is this bookshelf over here. So this is custom made. We designed it in order to fit the space. Definitely. The thing that brings our room together mm -hmm. is definitely our plants. Our plants. Yeah, all the different ones everywhere. And the color technique that we've used. So in that background where you see it's an art collection of pictures, which is called Silent City. But then at the background, as you can see, like the painting technique there, it's kind of like busy. So it's more of a busy movement 
and then the pictures say that it's quite silent. Like the city of Jogo, when you first come here, everything is quite busy and stuff, but no one knows what's going on inside of you. What, that's why it's called Silent City. With all these great ideas, you've also got to focus on the detail. Something I noticed was your draw lines over here have not been removed. I see also in your new joineries over here that that stuff hasn't been done. Are you guys comfortable with the judges walking in and seeing those details? Very comfortable. We did our best in the time that we had. Unfortunately, there might be a few details that are lacking, but we have done our best in this room. Clearly, you guys love specific elements in this room, and I'm sure our viewers will love them too. What are you hoping the judges, however, will love when they walk into the space? The colour. Definitely the colour. Um, this beautiful Plascon colour definitely evokes emotion mm -hmm. in you. As you walk in, the Oceanos really makes you... It, it's bright in a blue way. The feedback from the judges from the first challenge was that your room felt imbalanced. Have you guys tried to correct that imbalance in this space? I think we've made an effort and in terms of the function of this room compared to our last room, I think this one it's going to be more... Cohesive. Yeah. Design-wise it's thought about. Like you can stand and watch the paintings, it feels like you're in an art gallery, you can sit down read a book, it feels like you're in a library. You can turn down and sit down here and also turn it into a kind of like an office space type of a thing. While when you close the door, you are in another room, like you're in a different country, honestly speaking. One of the details that really caught my eye as I walked into the space was your use of Caesar Stone. Tell us about the concept behind what you've got there. So we sat down uh, with Melissa and we sketched the whole uh, planter box, uh, floating shelf, that we needed it to be more creative in such a way. So we thought about a bonsai tree. It's very creative, very luxurious, and we needed to create a piece that would make it work and noticeable and we are very pleased with the end result. I think the judges are going to like it. What makes you two so unique is that you've chosen to create a virtual character that will live in your home. Uh, I'm going to pretend to be that virtual character for a bit and just to feel at home. Who is the person that will be in this space and how have you tried to make this room suit them? So our client is a photographer, mm -hmm. so we definitely have made room for his beautiful art piece mm -hmm. on that wall over there. He's also quite an outgoing guy who likes to see people and do things. And but, Exactly, but he also likes his alone time when yeah. he has it because it's so few and far between. So this is basically our aim in this room. We want him to come here and relax, chill, and Be not think about more. anything else. Calm. Yeah, so we have all his favorite things in this room. The aim was to make our client very comfortable like you are now, Danny. <laughs> I am indeed very comfortable, but it's not about what I think, it's about what the judges think and what you think at home. Hashtag Afternoon Express. And hashtag Win a Home. The design duos have delivered rooms that are definitely the stuff dreams are made of. Now, if you're dreaming of a beautiful estate lifestyle, then stay with us because after the break, we look at the pros and cons of estate living and later, the judges arrive to critique the spaces. Don't go anywhere. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon. Designed for life. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. A warm welcome back. I hope you're enjoying your Friday afternoon with us. With Winter Home being in full swing at the moment on Afternoon Express, we're making ourselves experts on estate living. And over the course of the series, we'll explore various aspects related to buying and living on estates. Today, we discuss the different types of estates available in South Africa and how to choose the right type of estate for you. Welcome to our loft. It's good to have you. Nice to see you, Daniela. So, let's talk a bit about the pros and cons of living estates because I think everyone's very excited about estates. Why is there such a drive to living on estates in the country? I think fundamentally the, the drive has come from the need for security. You know, security uh. is a buyer's number one priority when they're looking now in South mm. Africa. And so this demand of getting onto gated estates has increased dramatically. Mm. Um, and they're all looking for security and then the lifestyle that the estate can give. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the other pros. I mean, you've mentioned sort of um, that, that security is a big one of those. What are the other pros yeah. of choosing estate living over sort of plot? Let me start with security again, because I just want to stress how important mm. it is. And I mean, these estates, a lot of them are spending a lot of money. They're spending millions and millions of rand on securing mm. the estate. You know, that's the perimeter fencing, it's the entry in and out of the estate, and it's the guards that go around. So when you drive into the estate, you literally feel like you can just 
breathe a huge sigh of relief, you've arrived home into this secure lifestyle. And it gives you peace of mind for you and yeah. your family. Okay. Uh, and the things that spin off from that are so important. It's the kids playing in the streets, walking to their neighbors' houses without so much concern as you would have you know, outside of the state. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can't stress enough how important that sense of security and the need mm. for that is. Yeah, without trying to sound contrived, I guess what we're also trying to do is, is explain all aspects to what estate living is. I mean, sure. you always feel like you're being sold something. People are like, you must go live on estates, must go live on estates while they're a big trend. But are there any cons that we should be aware of? Should we really consider really consider this decision? Yeah, I think so. And I think the big con is the, the loss of absolute freedom. Mm. You know, when you're moving into an environment, you're kind of moving into a community. And, and a community is a group of people with the same sets of values and, and, okay. and beliefs, etc. But when you move into to a suburb or an estate, you've got to abide by the laws. You know, yeah. if you're putting a thousand homes into one area and they've all got to abide by the same rules and guidelines, people mm. have to understand that you're buying into a set of rules mm. as well as the lifestyle. Okay. And you, you can't say once you transgress the rules down the line that you didn't know, you know, when you're signing these documents, when you're mm. buying the property, you sometimes forget what you're signing into. Yeah, I'm so protective of our viewers because I mean, one of them is going to get a chance to win a home on an estate. And I think they're all looking to figure out and understand, like me too, understand why I should go and invest in those spaces. So even if I don't win a home, why should I start investing in property in, in estates? Because I think it is such, a, you said, an exciting and growing yeah. space. Yeah. What final words of advice do you think you have for, for viewers who are looking to invest in these spaces? I mean, because there's so much that you don't know. I mean, yeah. how do you go about doing this process? Well, Remember, most buyers buy on emotion. They buy on emotion, they fall in love with their property or an, an estate, and then they're justified with fact mm. and logic afterwards. So I think it's just very, very important then before you make that final decision, when you're gonna be spending millions and millions of rands, when choosing an estate, choose the estate that's right for you. Mm. Choose the estate that's gonna give you the lifestyle you're looking for with all the amenities and the extras that come with it, but understand what you're signing, understand what you're buying into, because once you buy in, you've agreed to accept mm. all the rules that the estate has in place. Mm. Being in my position, I've had a huge privilege of being able to travel around to some of the estates and see what they've got on offer. And it really is exciting to see that they are not all exactly the same. Some of them offer a lot of lifestyle, some of them offer a lot of security, and they're all trying to find their own sort of niche. Um, so in terms of finding the right estate for ourselves, I mean, are there different kinds of estates? Yeah, and I think the big thing is location. So you know, are you gonna have a certain number of estates in the location that you wanna live? For example, if you're living in Durban, you, you only got a handful of estates that you can find without traveling too far. Mm. Um, nobody really wants to commute too far to and from yeah. work. Uh, so in terms of the type of lifestyle you're looking for, absolutely, you can get golf estates, retirement estates, eco estates, mm. there's, a, there's a range. Um, you know, for some people it's just an estate where you can go and live in an area where you have space to walk after work mm. and there's walking trails. So there's a variety of estates and you've got to find the one that's going to suit the lifestyle that you're looking mm. for. Pique my interest here, help mm. me understand why estates are such a big thing in South Africa at the moment, why are they booming at the moment? Well, I think A, security. So you know that South Africa, unfortunately, okay. we live in an environment where crime is, is, is mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that we have to, we have to live with. Uh, but what typically happens is when you have an estate that is fixed on supply, mm -hmm. so you can only fit so many homes into an estate. Once the building's done, once the supply is fixed, as soon as the demand goes up, your prices will go up. Ah. So it's a great long-term investment. If people want to get into that estate, your investment when you buy your house in that estate, over the long term, you're going to get good returns. Mm, lovely. Okay, so it is really worth us looking into estates. I mean, consider always the documentation. Make sure you know what the lifestyle is about, what you're allowed to do, not allowed to do with your homes as you yeah. go in the process. And potentially some of those people might be very different to who you are as an individual. So choose an estate that really suits you as, as a person. Spot on. Great advice. Well Thanks very much. Pleasure. All right, so remember that this season of Winner Home, you stand a chance of winning a beautiful apartment on the Eye of Africa estate. All you have to do is log on to privateproperty.co.za and answer an easy question. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Winner Home on Afternoon Express on SABC3. Now, as with any competition, our design duos also must have their work judged to determine the winner of each design challenge. For this space, our regular judges welcome one of Joburg's most sought-after interior designers to the panel. Contestants, your work is done and it's time to let your designs shine. The judges have arrived. We are waiting for the judges and I am so anxious. Uh, this challenge, I have no idea where it's going. I don't yeah. know what the judges are going to say. If we don't nail this one, I'm about to put some nails up in some judges. Because no way, from 
just entering that room, it's like, yes, <laughs> yes. From Plascon, the ever so colourful, Katlejo Kondlo. Winner of Winner Home Season 1, Donald Mumalo. And your guest judge for this challenge, mentor of Winner Home Season 1 and Josie's queen of interior design, it's Ntabi Taukobong. Our guest judge... The Jobe Queen. Yes, Jobe Queen of interior design, mm -hmm. Ntabi Taukobong. Such and an amazing soul. Yes, we admire her definitely. She's definitely pioneered that African touch yeah. in South African yeah. interior. So, She's the person that says, are you from Soweto? Are you from Soshanguve like me? You can make it. The guest judge is Ntabi Taukubong, which is quite exciting That's because good. I've got to see a lot of her work, but then we never got, I never got to see right. her in person. Mm. And I hope like she loves everything that we did in the space and that little knot of ours didn't think it's a last minute thought. Yes. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't because it was well, it was planned. It was planned. It was intentional. It was meant to be there. I so think I, we like literally planned every hair in the room. So. <laughs> <laughs> judges, the stage is yours. The three discerning judges make their first stop in Team VC's inspired relaxation room. But what will they think? I think the judges would love our desk. Mm -hmm. It's specifically designed for that room, custom made, mm -hmm. and I would love it if they consider it a feature. Um, it's quite functional as well because there's ample it is a feature. space, there's drawers mm -hmm. as well, you know, so it's a, it's a lovely working there's space. There's everything in that working space. There's an LP player, like a Stimela record. I love the room. Yeah, it came out nice than our first room. And our competitors. Oh God, it's really cool. Yeah, I know. Really nice. It literally is very cool. It's quite cold, but I love it. It's quite versatile. Mm. Um, you could meditate in here. It's lovely. The only thing, though, is that it doesn't get a lot of sun. So I wouldn't have gone with the blue color because it makes it even colder. It's beautiful. It's got that tropical sea, fresh, crisp vibe happening, um, but it's so clean and sparse and well spaced out. I'm really enjoying the blue. I, I like the blue. It's very unexpected. It works, it works. The only challenge I have with it is because the palm tree is so big, it almost needs the scale of the furniture also to be relevant to the plant. It becomes overwhelming in the space. I like it. It's quite a cool room. I think there's lots of space. I like that there's a side table. Uh, I think it's a very cool shelf. All in all, I think it's a job well done. Team Vivi's room is just beautiful. It's so crisp, it's so fresh. Love the combination of colors, the dark blue with the green plants. Uh, it just feels so tropical, but yet so elegantly open. Team Vivi's room is lovely. Um, I love the wall unit, the fact that it's the same color as the wall, that Oceano color. I also love the paint effect that they've done. It gives texture to the wall. But what is key for me is the versatility of the room. I love that you can do yoga in the room, you could go there and chill, it could become a study room. Team Vizi's room makes me feel so cool. I walk in there and I'm immediately transported to another world. I just love the fact that they've incorporated the theme of music into their space and that adds something, some, some character to it. I love the fact that you can sit there and just be transported into this world of music. I would have loved to see some soft furnishings being brought into the space. Perhaps um, the chair could have been a, a small couch that you can sit and literally lie on for hours and listen to the music. I think the intention of the room would have been better executed. A bit of advice in terms of the room layout, it is exquisitely done. Again, just have to be careful with the scale and proportion of elements. Plants can't overtake furniture. The chaise lounge could have been a little bit deeper just to give you that plush, relaxed, laid-back look. In terms of the rug, in proportion with the chaise lounge and the small little ottoman stool, they could have gone bigger in that space. Because of, again, of the overwhelming plant, everything just seems to shrink into a small little minuscule corner. Hmm. After a great start, the next stop for the judges is Team House and Leisure's dual-purpose walk-in closet and home office. Will the judges love it? What I think the judges would love about our room is our attention to detail, because Vanil and I really pay crazy attention to detail. To like the smallest thing, the fiber of the carpet, if it's he's crazy. crazy. Oh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got OCD detail. <laughs> but then I'm just a perfectionist. 
by nature. How so beautiful! Look at this light! Look at me! Look at me! Oh, this is so stunning! What a beautiful room! Mm. I just, it feels so serene, so sophisticated, and just so creative. I'm just, I'm impressed. It's elegant. It's excellent in, in design, I feel. It's just so well executed. The proportions, the feel, the flow, the tranquil colors mixed with that hot little teal green in the middle. It's just, it's stunning. I died. Died, I woke up, and this is just absolute heaven. The only negative is that it's not mine. Negative. Speechless. Team House and Leisure, just dreamy. It's indulgent. I mean, that rug is luxurious. It's plush. The touches of the pops of color. Honestly, it was faultless. The attention to details, meticulous. The mirrors that they use in that space, creating a sense of room. I love the fact that they knotted the light, so that adds attention to detail as well. Just the, a piece that draws your eye. Every single touch had meaning in that space. This room is just beautiful. The Caesar Stone desk is done so well with its floating. And it's actually such a nice effect to see something that looks so heavy floating. And I think that's an interesting talking point in a room. You walk in, you feel transported into an ethereal paradise. The color tones, the mirror, the use of flowers, the artwork, the positioning is exquisite. I love that it's such a small room, but so much has been achieved in the space. The desk, the walk-in closet, the details on the closet, the little spaces for the shoes, the Caesar Stone vanity unit is outstanding. The scale and proportion, which is a big thing for me in design, are just well executed in this room. Last but certainly not least, the judges visit Team Habitat's Leopard's Library with its striking chandelier and bold design elements. Will it outshine the others? Oh my word. Mm -mm. I think the judges need to love every single bit of our room. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think it's just so fabulously gorgeous, over the top, uh, but yet with the use of mirrors and space, it, it still allows you to breathe and appreciate the room. Wow, I just love how these guys have improved. I mean, this room is just so well put together, mm -hmm. so punchy, so funky, and their personalities are coming through. I really like how they've taken such a small room and they've created a sense of height with the cupboards and the shelving um, and a lot of depth as well with the mirror. So it makes, it gives it a sense of height and, and space as well. A negative would be that structurally the bench behind me wouldn't work. It needs to be done safer. Again, a problem for me is the plants. I wish they would have just gone with natural, alive plants. I think it just lets the room down. Team Habitat, yes, yes, and yes. I just love the fact that these guys are exploring their personalities in decor. There's a lot of things, and almost like the accessories are accessorized. And I think that's, that's actually such, it's such a beautiful moment to look around the room and see all these beautiful objects. Such a fashionable room, but also so rooted in practicality. Fabulous. It's fabulousity to the nth degree. It's quite international, it's chic, and it's quite bold. The color combinations worked well. Very soothing and restful in such a bold space. So rich, it's so busy, it's so team too much. I, I love the details. I think it's just interesting to see how they've developed the room into so many uses, as in you can get a desk, you've got a lounge area, you've got a banquet seating, is uh, very exciting. I don't think interiors always need to be necessarily sterile and balanced. I think this room in its over-the-top crystal chandeliers, velvety chairs, it works. If anything, from a style point of view or from a design point of view, is a bay window backhead seating that's built in there. We just need to pay a little bit more attention to the detailing of it and its um, structure. I think what's attempted as a bay window is eventually going to collapse because the, the support is resting on the, the skirting. So we just need to be careful that when we do design, we look out for some of those practical and really technical considerations. The typical advice would be to say, tone it down, but I, I don't think that's necessary. I love I love the, the too muchness.
Wow, it looks like a very close call on who will win this challenge with so much positive feedback from those judges. It was Team House and Leisure who won the first challenge, but Team Habitat and Team VC used that as motivation to push themselves. Now everyone wants to know if their efforts have paid off and they're hoping to win a very useful reward. Contestants, welcome back. Challenge two is done and dusted. I'm sure you're very anxious to hear what the judges had to say about your individual rooms and to find out who our winner is going to be. Sitting here waiting for Danilo to tell us what's up, who won mm. the prize this time around. I was feeling like, hello, <laughs> I'm wearing the lighting that's in the room. I better win. Uh, I really hope it's us. <laughs> Crossing fingers. Yes. I'm nervous. My heart is gua, gua, gua like crazy. But then I'm just hoping that it all goes well. Right, let's begin with the judges' feedback. And I'm going to start with Team Habitat. The reason why I start with you two is because the judges felt that you were the most improved from the last challenge. Improvements. That's what we like to hear. Going higher and higher. Because each round we're going to get better, stronger, faster, and we're going for that big prize. They loved what you did with such a small space. Their only criticism, however, for you guys, was your bay window and perhaps those fake plants. Mm. I must say, no. <laughs> I feel fake plants, I mean, with the water crisis we have in. Sure, if you're not using plastic flowers, shut the front door <laughs> and stop putting on your sprinklers. Yes. So for me, the judges need to get on board. Yes. Plastic is the new way in terms of show houses. Eco. Mm. I mean, save water. If you want the garden, go to the golf course. Team VC. The judges said that they felt like they were being transported into a whole new world, just like you hoped they would. They also used words like, cool. They loved your paint technique, but did feel, however, that your choice of color, given that not much light comes into the room, made the room feel slightly cold. Uh, we understand the judges' critique that the room felt mm -hmm. uh, cold. A little bit cold. Especially because it was lacking in sunlight. Yeah. Um, we definitely understand where they're coming from with yeah. this and we definitely will consider it going forward. Team House and Leisure. The judges felt that your room was very versatile given the little space that you had and felt that they were in a boutique. Danilo just mentioned that our space looked like a boutique and that could either go south because maybe people don't want to feel like they're in a boutique in a home. But I felt quite good and I felt like it was positive feedback because when we were designing the units, we wanted like to give off like a luxurious feel. There can, however, only be one winner. And that winner walking away with 3,000 Rand added to their budget is... Team House and Leisure, once more. <laughs> Like I really was. That was fighting because it was anybody's game. Like we all did well, mm -hmm. and everybody's faces looked amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes, and for the judges to actually pay attention to the fact that we did so well with the detail, I think it gives us extra strength. All I'm thinking is someone needs to give me my money back for that lighting because <laughs> I saw their lighting and it was nowhere near as strong as ours. We needed that 3,000 <laughs> rand to cover our going over budget. <laughs> How dare they win again? Okay, so, Kubegani. Tatani Yonkinto, Kubegani. No, it's not okay. No, Kubegani, they must just Kubega and buy the judges. It's fine. We'll be fine with it. We'll live with it. Okay. The aim is 100,000. It's but not congratulations. 2,000. Ah, no congratulations. Kubegani. Kubegani. <laughs> Oh, it's so great to see that sportsmanship between the design duos, but let's be honest, winning is even greater. So make sure that you visit privateproperty.co.za and enter our bi-weekly giveaway of Plascon paint to the value of 5,000 Rand. Remember that by doing so, you'll also automatically be entered into our grand prize competition and you could win your choice of one of three homes as furnished by our design duos. So vote for your favorite design duo today and every day and you could also win 
big. Next week, the design duos discover which space will be transformed next, or will it maybe even be two spaces? All I can tell you is that the next challenge is the most difficult yet, and we'll have our design duos working double time. Tune in next Friday at 4 p.m. to find out. From me, Daniela Acquisto, thanks so much for joining us. Keep using that hashtag, WinnerHome, and we'll see you next week Friday on Afternoon Express for Winner Home. Good night and have a great weekend. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Afternoon Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.